So we're going to look at this example where we have to find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region bounded by the curve y equals 1 fourth x squared, x equals 2, and y equals 0 about the y-axis. Okay, now I'm going to show how to solve this in two different ways. Okay, so first we're going to do the washer's method, and then we'll look at cylindrical shells. Okay, and you should always, always, always draw a picture if possible. It just helps make things clear. Gets the, we can see what we're dealing with. Right, so for example, in this situation, we have x equals 2, so I'm going to come out to 2 like this, and we have this vertical line. That's a boundary. We have y equals 0, which is the x-axis, so down here is a boundary. And then we have this y equals 1 fourth x squared, which is a parabola, that at 0, if, if x is 0, y is 0, so it intersects my boundary y equals 0. And let's see, if x is 2, and I plug in 2 into here, I get 1 fourth times 4, which is 1. So here's something like that. So we're going from 0 to 1 in the y direction. And we have this parabola going like this. Okay, and so this is our region here. And we're rotating it about the y axis. So you can imagine it being spun around kind of like this. This is negative 2 out here and positive 2. And so if you can visualize here, we have some sort of revolution. And so we just kind of have this. 3D shape, and we're trying to figure out the volume of this thing. I have two different methods that we can use to solve this. I'm actually go through both of them, and just to kind of give you an idea. So the first one we're going to do is called washers, and the way that works is I'm going to take for washers method. I'm going to take a slice that runs horizontal to the curve, and the reason it's called washers is because you can imagine if I do that slice and I pull that slice out and hold it up and look at it it's going to be a circle, right, because I revolved this curve around the axis. And for washer's method, what you need to do is we're going to add up the area of these little rings, starting from the bottom, going all the way up to how high we can. And we need to calculate the area of each one of these rings. And actually, we're actually calculating a volume, because you can imagine that this ring has a really thin width about it. So they're kind of like little washers, right? That's why we call it washer's method. Now to calculate the volume of this washer, we need an inside radius and we need an outside radius. And so when we take our integral, the volume is going to be the integral going from something to something. Well, how do you calculate the volume of this? You have the uh, outside radius, so we have pi r1 squared, we'll say this is r1, minus pi r2 squared, we'll say r2 is the inside radius. And the reason I say pi r squared, right, is because we're talking about the area of the circle. So I take the area of the outside circle minus the area of the inside, where that's the part we punched out. And then for a volume of this coin, we also have to consider the width, which we let to be delta x. Okay, so again, you have outside radius, you have inside radius, and then you have the width. And you need to learn to not just memorize the formula for the integral, but to be able to construct it yourself. Because if we change the way things are sliced or the way they're rotated. It can mess with the mechanics of this integral, but this is the underlying idea. Okay, now another thing to keep in mind, and this is confusing, and actually I wrote dx here for my integral, but what if I'm not integrating with respect to x? And in fact, I'm not in this case. And my students often ask me, how, how do you know? Well, notice how I'm stacking my slices. I'm stacking my slices going up. Right, I have a slice here, and the next one may be like across here, something like that. We're stacking our slices in the y direction. And so because of that, I know I'm going to integrate with respect to y. So my width, where I wrote dx, I should have actually written dy here, okay? because I'm integrating with respect to y, which means I also need to take my bounds and solve them in terms of y. So here I had y equals 1 fourth x squared. I actually need to get this as a function of y. So I know that's 4y equals x squared, or x equals positive or negative, so that's 2 root y. Because we're rotating it about the axis, I don't need positive or negative. I can just consider the positive part 2 root y. Okay, so that tells me then my volume is actually going to be, well, something to something. Let's see, in the y direction, where am I starting? We already showed it. we're starting at 0 and ending at 1. So I'm going from 0 to 1. I have pi, uh, let's see, I need an outside radius, so if I look at my picture, where's my outside radius? If I'm starting here, 
and I'm going out as far as I can. My outside radius is actually this vertical line 2. So that's going to be 2 squared, okay, minus pi times my inside radius. The inside radius is this curve, so I get 2 root y, and of course all of that is squared as well, squared integrating with respect to y. Okay, so uh, we can clean this up now, 4 pi minus 4 pi y dy. So I could actually factor out a 4 pi because that's a constant, and when I do, I'm left with 1 minus y. And this is a pretty easy integral, right? And I'm integrating that going from 0 to 1. All right, so be careful plugging these in. But when you plug in 0 and 1, you should get 4 pi times 1 minus 1 half times 1 squared minus 4 pi times 0 minus 1 half times 0 squared, which is all 0. So I end up with 4 pi times a half, or simply 2 pi. So the integration part was pretty simple. Once we got here down, that was about as easy as it can get with integration, right? The tricky part was right here. Okay, and so again, you can't just memorize the formula for Washer's method. You have to understand how to build Washer's method because my outside radius was this vertical line 2, which could have confused us if we weren't really sure how to do that. Also, we knew to go to respect to y because we're stacking each of our slices in the vertical direction. So that, no, that lets me know I'm integrating with respect to y. Okay, now let me show you the other method, cylindrical shells. Okay, here's my figure again. This time we're going to do cylindrical shells. And what that means is instead of doing, in this case, horizontal slices, I'm going to do some vertical slices like this along my curve. And notice if I did that, as I'm spinning around my solid, that particular little slice right there will actually spin around itself. And so I end up with these tubes, right? We call them cylindrical shells, but you can imagine it's like some sort of tube. Okay, so this time when I'm calculating the volume, what I need to do is I'm going to integrate from something to something, and I need to calculate the volume of each one of these cylindrical shells. Okay, now the way this works is you basically get a cylinder with kind of, we average our radius. It comes from the Riemann sum. We don't have to worry too much about that right now. But here's what you end up with. 2 pi x times f of x dx. Okay, now where is this coming from? This represents the circumference. And in particular, the x is a radius, right? That's 2 pi r. Okay, the f of x represents the height. And then the dx represents the width of each tube. And hopefully you can visualize that in this slice. Okay, so now in this particular example, again, i got to figure out, I wrote dx. Am I really integrating with respect to x here? And the answer is yes, because notice my slices would come about in the x direction. The slices would go from 0 to 2 in the x direction. So this is integrating with respect to x. And I already know, I know the height function. So I'm going from 0 to 2, 2 pi. My radius in this case is simply x. I'm just starting at the axis and moving out x units. My height is this curve, which we know is 1 fourth x squared. And then my width is dx. So this is actually a pretty straightforward integral as well. And so I end up with, let's see, 0 to 2. Uh, isn't that pi over 2 x cubed dx? Okay, which ends up being pi over 2, 1 fourth x to the fourth, 0 to 2. Being careful with my arithmetic here, I end up with pi over 2 times 4 minus 0, and I get, again, 2 pi, which is what I got with the washer's method. Okay, so we've done the same integral two different ways, one with washers, one with cylindrical shells, and I hope they both make sense to you. Again, it's not good enough just to memorize the canned expression for the cylindrical shells. It did work out this time because this particular example was pretty simple. But if I had rotated around a different axis, let's say I rotated around x equals 2, let's just quickly look to see if we could set up what that integral would look like. So if I was rotating around 2, my figure would look something like this, and I'm rotating like that. Okay, so my cylindrical shells are going like this, and they're rotating around that way. Okay. Now again, I am integrating from 0 to 2 in the x direction, but now i got to reconsider what my radius is, because at here, if I'm not here, the radius is actually 2. If I go, the closer I get in, 
the smaller my radius becomes. That radius is not x, it's 2 minus x. The height stays the same at 1 fourth x squared, and the width always is dx. But this is how I'd set up this integral. And so this is what I'm saying. Don't just memorize the canned expression. Understand each part so that you can build the expression yourself. I also like the example that we did because we saw, we saw that we could do it with washers and cylindrical shells. And so you may wonder why apply both if you only need one. Well, depending on the context, sometimes washers works really well. Sometimes cylindrical shells works really well. Sometimes we need to do one and not the other. Sometimes we could do both, but the work is real simple in one way and not as simple as the other. Sometimes it's easy in both. It's good to have more tools. That's never a bad thing. I hope these make sense. If you have questions on discs, washers, or cylindrical shells, let me know. I'd be glad to help. And thank you for watching. Bye.